Well, we come with, uh, on the ladies' side, we have 12, 12 athletes, and we have 14 on the men's side. Um, we, um, we had a good conference championship. We've qualified well here. We're, we've, uh, we're, we're pleased. We're, we're relatively healthy. And um, we've got the kind of group that we've typically had. Uh, we're a little bit more balanced on the men's side, but uh, kind of have a typical A&M team. Well, this has a, been a very historic year for us. This is the first uh, of its kind at the University of Texas where we're combined now uh, between the men and the women. We've got 27 athletes here representing the University of Texas. Uh, we've got a young group on the men's side, uh, really uh, with a, a bunch of freshmen and, and a couple sophomores on there. On the women's side, uh, you know, coming in, feeling at, uh, after conference and regionals and stuff that we're in a great spot and have a very balanced attack across the board. So we're excited. Uh, you know, it's goal at the beginning of the year, obviously, was to win conference. We were able to do that on the, on the women's side, both indoor and out. Uh, on the men's side, we were second, both indoor and out. And after that, it was about getting ready for regionals and ultimately getting here to Eugene. So we're very excited. Uh, we look forward to being out here because I know that Ben and the rest of the staff has done a phenomenal job to get ready to put on a, a, a great championship. First of all, let me say welcome. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. Thank all the schools for, for being here as being one of the, the host institutions uh, here for this championship. Um, we're extremely uh, blessed to, to be able to put this meet on. Um, it's one of the best meets in track and field. And of course, uh, we're honored to have all of the uh, competing Division I teams here. As far as the Ducks are concerned, um, we have 39 uh, competitors. Um, and so we're excited for, for that. Uh, it's, a, it's a large number of, of kids. We'll be busy here over the next uh, four days, and we're excited and ready to get going. Good afternoon. Um, we're very excited also. Um, this is um, always the vocal point of our season. We talk a lot about the championship season, and it's upon us, and we're excited about it. Uh, we have 12 women, 13 men. Um, I feel like we're very balanced on both sides, probably a little bit more so on the men. Um, and looking at it overall, you know, we are as healthy as we've been all year long. We're, again, to re a point, very excited about being here and looking forward to the championship as a whole. Um, as I talked to John Hendershot earlier today, and he made the point that he's never been to a bad meet in Eugene. And I think this may be one of the most exciting championships we've ever been to. If you look at, look at the qualifiers and the way things shake out, you got great team battles on both sides. And I was kind of looking at it. And you know, Pat's team and mine mirror each other a lot. We kind of go to head to head in a lot of events. So. Um, again, just excited to be here and ready to, to participate in a great championship. We'll open it up to the questions from the media. Please identify yourself and uh, which coach you're, you're directing to. Tim Gill at Oregonian. Uh, for all the coaches, um, the meets uh, in Eugene will be for the next eight years. Uh, I'm wondering uh, how you feel about uh, that. Is uh, track and field ready to, to be uh, like baseball or softball and have a permanent site? And if, if so, well, um, you know, <laughs> can I answer the question? <laughs> I'm waiting. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I'll, you know, I'll be brutally honest, as I tend to be, and, uh, you know, I'm really happy for Robert and, and his teams and the fact that they, you know, hosted me here and then, and I know that they'll do a wonderful job. That's not, I have no truck with that. Um, not necessarily sure that I'm 100% on board with it being here. You know, I know we talk about a permanent site. You know, I say this to people all the time, we're not football. You know, we're not baseball, we're not softball. Some of the places, let's just say baseball, softball, not football, that have a permanent site, it's just a different deal. And as a coach and as athletes, when we're coming here to compete against, you know, as you guys have anointed them as the best team in the country, um, it makes it a little more difficult for us. I have to travel further than anybody here. You know, we, you know, if we go commercial, it takes us almost 16, 17 hours to get here. And to come here and try to beat a team that's slept in their own beds is a little difficult. And um, the reasons I've been given for it being here, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm like John, I've never been to a bad track meet here. I've never been to a bad track meet here. But am I sure that it's what's best for college track and field? I'm not sure about that. I'm not. Well, <clears throat> you know that they're going to put on a phenomenal you know, uh, competition. I mean, they've shown that with the trials and, and, and previous championships. Uh, along the same lines, you know, would it be easier if Robert's team was maybe ranked 25th instead of, you know, vying for national titles? Maybe so. 
but again, you know, I think looking at it, removing yourself as a coach at, at, at university, what is the best thing for our sport? You know, we'd of course love to host this championship in Austin, Texas, but right now it's probably 98 degrees and that's at eight o'clock at night, you know? So overall, what's the best for the athletes? What's the best for the fan experience? So, you know, we've got to think not just for the now, but also for the future of the sport. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of a mix, but I think that it's, you know, you know when you're coming out here to Eugene, uh, whether it's the venues, the crowd, uh, it's going to be a great experience. And at the end of the day, that's what we want for the student athletes is to be able to walk away from here as they move on to their next chapter in life and realize that, you know, they were a part of something special. So. You were up. I'll go last on this <laughs> I, uh, I think it's a great, I think it's very good for the sport of track and field. I'm not real convinced about the number of years, but I think that having a meet more than one year in one, sh one place, and especially here, is really good for track and field. I think somebody else has got to step up to the plate and say, we can, we can copy or we can do something similar to what they're doing here in Eugene, but I don't know who that is. Um, and, and somebody's got to prove the point that they can do that. Um, but right now, I think this is very good for, for, for the sport. I wish there were, that the site didn't have a horse in the race. I wish it was an, an Omaha. Uh, that, would be, that would be the best thing, but that can't help in our, happen in our sport right now. So the second best thing is to do what we're doing right now. I think fans, when you turn the TV on and you see people sitting in the stands, uh, you tend to think that that's a championship and I'm going to watch that. And, and that's what we have to do for our sport right now. That's more important than any, anything. I guess uh, this one is, is easy for me because I've kind of been politicking this question for forever. And not only to these gentlemen sitting here, but to our many other colleagues. And all of them make good points. Um, Mike uh, definitely has a, a, a different view, and I'm sure Pat maybe has a, a, a different view a, as well. But for us to grow the sport, and that's what it is, that's what it's about, that's what we're trying to do, grow the sport. And the second thing that is, goes along with that is for the student athlete. You know, we as coaches sometimes get set in our ways and like things our way. You heard Mike reference uh, travel the furthest away. Well, if that's what's good for the kids, then let's travel all the way to Asia if that's going to give the student athletes the best opportunity. Um, and so those two things, I, I don't see how you find a better place in the United States than to do it than Eugene. Um, now, having said that, Pat makes a good argument and says that if you don't want it here, somebody step up to the plate and do it better. Be more than happy to, to go somewhere and have an experience like this. Because once again, it's for the student athlete and for the student athlete to travel around different parts of the country and the world to, to see would be awesome. But until then, you know, you can't get any better than, than Eugene, Oregon. Um, I, I, love the, I love the things that uh, the kids get here. For example, we're here this morning and I'm in uh, OHOP for our OHOP, their International House of Pancakes. And there's a group of cancer survivors. They take a trip every year uh, there, and they were just happened to be sitting there. And they didn't know me from a can of paint. They thought I was with Kentucky because I was sitting with some of the, the coaches and kids from Kentucky. And they came up and said, hey, hope you guys really enjoy your experience here. Track is really big here, and we, we love your, your being here, and the fans are, are really knowledgeable. And they hit it out of the park. They didn't know I was Robert Johnson, uh, the coach at, at Oregon. And they did a phenomenal job in making the kids feel welcome. And I would challenge other places uh, to be able to rival that. So that's what makes Eugene special. That's what makes Oregon special. And that's why the NCAA chose to put the championship here for, for eight years. And we're blessed and thankful for it. I think there is one other issue, that, and, and it is great for the athletes. It's a $900 plane ticket from Houston. That's tough on parents. That's tough on fans from around the country, too. So there, there, are, some thing, there are some issues that need to be addressed. And it may be NCAA issues that need to be addressed along those lines. Um, but um, 
this is a tremendous venue for the athlete. There's no question. Yeah. And, and I, I just want to you know, agree with that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to be viewed as a Grinch this throw Christmas Eve, okay? <laughs> um, I think Eugene is a wonderful place. And I'm, like I said earlier, Vince had some great competitions here. We had some great success here. But as Robert said, if the best place for the meet is to be in Asia, let's put it in Asia, unless everybody have to travel the same distance to get to Asia. Like, it's a little bit different. Because having it here because it's the best place for the student athlete, when it's a little bit difficult for more people to get in than others, that's, that's not the best. That was best for the port from my standpoint. So, but so everybody understands, I think Eugene does a wonderful job putting on track and field. And, and Mario <laughs> said the, it might be 95 in Austin, which it might be. And everybody thinks that's a negative. We've run pretty fast in Austin when it's 95 Very degrees. It doesn't make any difference. You um, put the best kids in the country on the track in Asia uh, <laughs> on asphalt, they're going to run fast. And, and we spend another thousand dollars on Allegra D. <laughs> we get here too, so there are other issues too. Well, as you guys can see, once you, you ask Robert. these uh, opinions, you're going to get a, a a variety of of answers. But at the end of the day, if you keep those things in mind, I think the NCAA is doing a, a phenomenal job in when they're awarding the the Ducks the uh, the championship. Four hundred. Uh, Robert Johnson, Westrun.com. Question for Robert and Mario. One of the biggest matchups is sort of the individual 400 women between Phyllis and Courtney. Who do you guys, you know, you've got the American indoor record holder versus the collegiate record holder outdoors. Who do you guys see as the favorite, and do you feel like your athlete is sort of the one to beat? I guess you probably left out one with the defending champion uh, as well. Um, so there's, there's three ladies there that all have some accolades and credentials. Um, you know, I, I like my crew. I, I like our, our team. I, I like Phyllis Francis um, that's there in the in the quarter mile. Um, we have a, a healthy respect for all of the competitors there, but um, the ones you mentioned are definitely super, super talented. And then, uh, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out in the end. I agree, you know, with Robert in a the sense. There's, there's some not just the, the Texas-Oregon matchup. I mean, you know, Pat's got some phenomenal girls as, as well as, you know, Mike. So, you know, it's going to be a marquee event. But again, there's going to be a lot that happens, you know, throughout the course of the week to, you know, by the time they get to that final and stuff. So I think at that point, you know, it's not so much about time. You know, they're going to run something fast. I know that Phyllis being in front of the home crowd, that's, that's probably worth at least a half a second in my book. But, uh, but it's going to be great. I, you know, as a track fan, you know, sometimes you just have to sit back in the stands and, and take everything in. So, uh, but it's definitely going to be a, a great event to watch this week. Can you kind of just assess the readiness of both of your teams heading into tomorrow and how comfortable you feel with where everything's at? Um, <clears throat> uh, of course, um, everybody knows we had a, a few dings coming into the, the championship. Um, and one of the ones that we were really counting on. Um, but as far as the everybody is, is healthy, there's some um, competing. Um, we, I think we're rounding into, into shape, just like uh, Coach Holloway mentioned. And it's, it's one of those things to where we changed up and we did some things different during the, uh, the outdoor season for this moment. Um, and I, I think that so far it's going well to have 39 kids um, competing and make the meet definitely shows that we're trending in the right direction. <clears throat> and so uh, it's one of those things to where I almost wish this thing was uh, on Monday, you know, as kids for Christmas. You wake up and it's not time yet. You wake up, it's not time yet. You wake up, it's not time yet. So we're kind of ready to pull the bow and uh, let everything out of the uh, box. By Monday, you mean yesterday? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where at Pac twelves uh, we were we missed had to to make a quick change and then to be able to come back and, and have ten days to to change up and, and work on some things and be better prepared, um, not having to worry about so much the unknown. Um, and we were able to get it done. They they were they were second there at the Pac twelves and then they won their heat at regionals. So not the lineup that we started with, but um, our, our motto has been um, strength in, in, in numbers. And we're able to 
have the numbers to for somebody to step in and step up. Uh, Jonathan Gold, let's run uh, My question is for Coach Johnson. Uh, you've got one of the best distance runners out there, Edward Cheserak. I was wondering, you know, he's only a freshman, but he ran all across country and then doubled it indoors. Now he's doubling doing a 5K and 10K outdoors. Do you worry about him breaking down, you know, with him being so young? Great question. Um, one of the again, one of the things that again you you heard me say that we changed and done some things, and some of our some of our fans, some of our, our longtime uh, constituents uh, were a little indifferent to those changes, and some of those were not running uh, Edward Cheseret at home in some of our, our home meets. But um, I think you make a, a great point there, and Edward's running a lot. He ran a lot indoors and doing the three and the five. Um, he had a, a very uh, easy transition to the outdoors. We kind of went back and retooled some things and got his mileage back up after the indoor season. Um, and he's where he should be. Um, 5'10 is a natural double. Everybody that's a, a distance runner that does those things um, does that a lot. So it's not unexpected. It's not out of character. It's just one of those things where we had to manage what he did leading up into the uh, championship season. Austin Bean with the Register Guard. Robert, Oregon obviously has had so much success in track and field, but when you took over winning an outdoor team title, um, was that a big focus for you and what did you feel like it would take to get the program into that? Uh, it's one of those things to where a little bit of a, a change or a switch in philosophy a little bit and focusing on uh, the championships, uh, winning winning trophies. Um, you hear, you hear the, these guys talk about the the, the home field advantage and things like that. Well, um, I don't I don't necessarily know if I agree with all of that because I think the numbers are 83 and 84 since the Ducks have won an outdoor championship. So if it's such a home field advantage, what are we doing wrong? Um, so it's one of those things to where we are excited. We definitely have been looking for, at this moment. This is one of the things that's, that's marked on our, on our calendar. We start the championship season and then work backwards. Um, with this being the, the focal point and the end game uh, for us. Curtis Anderson, Track Town USA. This is for all four coaches. Um, I'm going to ask you to put on your promoter's cap and give me one reason why people should come out to this meet or watch it on TV. I think. Yeah, I th go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Appreciate that, Pat. You're welcome. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think. You know, there's several reasons to watch this meet. Um, one, you know, the facilities, the crowd, the the thing that meets the things that meet management do to make sure the athletes have a great experience. Um, I also think that you know I've been to the World Championship, the Olympic Games. You know, there's not a better meet than this one. You know, the 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 passion, the pride that you know every coach and every program and every athlete puts into this is just phenomenal. And just being back in the warm-up area, just being I was out on the track yesterday and today, and just watching the seriousness and the attention to detail that everybody that gets here puts into this, it's phenomenal. So, as a, if you're a true track and field fan or just a novice fan, if you want to get the the fever, so to speak, about being a track and field fan, this is the place to come watch it. Best meet in America. <laughs> You know, the one thing I think everybody can relate to is running, at, you know, no matter what the sport. And you're getting ready to see over the next four days in our sport of track and field, you know, some of the best performances in the world. Uh, you know, being in Olympic Games, World Championships, you know, you're seeing the best of the best here. And you're going to see some, you know, with, with 2016 right around the corner, obviously some, some rising stars. And, uh, you know, if, again, you know, it's great to be up here with these gentlemen. Uh, it must mean we're doing something right because they've all won championships. Uh, but from a, from a fan perspective, I think that, uh, you know, you're getting a, a chance to, you know, see some of the best out there. But at the same time, you're in one of the best venues in the world. So it, it, I think it's a win-win on all different fronts. All of those things said, I think it, this meet comes down to a team. Who wins it? People get the start relating to teams, not just individual performances. I think that's, the, all of a sudden, this turns into one of us, and maybe because uh, there's somebody else out there that can win this championship. I mean, everybody gets 
I've been here too many times where we start talking about this four, and I've been out of this four and, and won it. So it, there, you know, you always got you, you got to keep your eyes open. But this is about this is about teams. This is about a team competition. All of a sudden, you guys are all talking about what team is going to win. Nobody has said how high are we going to jump in the high jump. Nobody. It's about what team is going to win. And that's what this comes down to. We've, we've rehearsed all year long for individual performances, and now everybody's concerned about the team. And that's what's great about this. Last question. Coach Johnson, <coughs> Craig Loper, KMTR. If you haven't already uh, delivered your final message to the team, to your team, what would that be, your final message before we step out tomorrow? Oh, gosh. Um, I haven't even thought that, that, that far uh, ahead. Um, I know we've, we've done some, some things that we're going to try to do in our, our, our team dinner tonight, um, but it'll be that um, we've, we've done all the work, we've, we've prepared, we know all the, the uncertainties, um, no, nothing special. You know, do what you did to, to get here, you'll be pleasantly surprised. You're going to see a lot of people that tighten up and choke it. It isn't going to be because of the, the pollen uh, this out there in, in the air. Um, don't do anything, anything special. Um, do what you've always done, um, and, and you'll be happy.